Hey everyone, welcome back to One Cent Sports Cards YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be doing another set review in the young card collecting season. This time we are going to do the most in-depth review you're going to find anywhere on the internet for 2021 Tops Opening Day. It's an inexpensive set, but does that mean that there's nothing that you can get? Well, it's time to find out in this review of 2021 Tops Opening Day. As winter turns to spring and the weather gets warmer, another tradition of spring is Topps releasing its annual Topps opening day set. And in this in-depth set guide and review, what we're trying to do is figure out how good 2021 Topps opening day actually is. How are we going to do that? Well, we're going to use the one cent sensational set ranking it's an exclusive ranking that i have used for the last two years to figure out how good sets are how do now how do i do that well first of all we're going to dig into this set like no one else does on the internet this is the most in-depth ranking system you're going to find anywhere on the internet what it is is we're going to break it down into 10 different categories that includes everything from cost value, the auto checklist, the parallels, the inserts, you name it, we're going to categorize it. And each category is going to be worth one to 10 points. Then what we do, we add up all those points and then rank it on the, on the scale that you see at the left. The higher the, the higher the points, the more stars you get, the better the set is. Then we will also cover off on how good this set is compared to the last set of Topps opening day. And finally, we'll compare it to all of the other sets that have been released so far this year in the young 2021 card collecting season. So before we begin, be sure to hit that thumbs up for me. It's the best thing that you can do to show me that you like these review videos. And if you have not done so already, please subscribe so you can catch all of the set guides that are going to be coming out in the 2021 season. And if you want to be the first to see those, be sure to hit the bell so you are notified as soon as those videos go live. So back to 2021 tops opening day. Here's the things we're going to cover off on. We're going to go into the set highlights, which is that 10,000 foot view, kind of a nice you know, overview of what the set is. I'm going to tell you all the different ways that you can buy into it. And we'll dig a little bit deeper, tell you what the key rookies are in the set, what the key chase cards are going to be. We'll cover off on what all the parallels, inserts, relics, and autos that you can pull out of Topps opening day are. And then I'm even going to tell you what, which teams you should be targeting in breaks. Probably a lot of case breaks of Topps opening day, maybe some divisional breaks, but I'll give you the six teams that I would be chasing. And then I'm going to give you my opinions on the set. I'm going to tell you what I think is good about it. I'm going to tell you what I think is bad about it. And then that will bring us to the one cent sensational set ranking where we are going to figure out on a scale of how good this set actually is. And then we'll show you all of the 2021 scores that we have given out so far. So what is it about Topps opening day that we are looking at? Well, the highlights of the set, the first thing you need to know, it's an inexpensive set. It's an entry level set. It is focused on the fun side of baseball. It really evokes the spirit of baseball and kind of being out there on the field. And it is typically geared towards a younger collector. This year, there's a 220 card base set checklist, and that is actually up 20 cards from 2020. Surprisingly, it is in its 23rd year of production. It is one of Topps' Topps's longest running um, sets without it being interrupted. It's ran since 1998. This year, you get a pretty small parallel rainbow. You're going to have the base cards, but then they also have the opening day edition cards and one of ones. Um, but you can expect that in retail, there's probably going to be, you know, some exclusive retail formats where you may get a few more parallels as well. It is available in retail and as a hobby format. And it also uses the same design from the 2021 Topps flagships set. The only difference is, is you're going to find an opening day logo on the card. Um, there are a lot of different insert sets um, in 2021, and some of them are a lot harder to pull than others. 
And there are five different autograph sets that are available, but none of them are guaranteed to be found in any format. So you can't go out and buy a box with a guaranteed auto in it. Also, the mascots return for 2020 and they have insert cards, they've got relic cards, and they even have auto cards of the mascots. And there is image variations of the base set and image variation autos also available. The other big key thing, this is one of Topps' most inexpensive sets of the 2021 card season. So how can we buy into it? Well, first, you could buy a case of this via the hobby format. Each case is going to have 20 boxes um, in a case. There's 36 packs in a box and seven cards per pack. So that would get you an astounding 5,040 total cards. The current price on that, about a little less than 900 bucks, 880 bucks about. So your cost per card, a minuscule 17 cents. What would you get with that? Well, you would get 720 inserts. Um, in the hobby box, if you don't want to go that hard, um, you can just get a hobby box. It's going to be 36 packs per box, seven cards per pack, 252 total cards. It's running at about $45 right now. So your cost per card is about 18 cents and you're guaranteed to get 36 inserts. You can also find this in retail. Some of the retail options that you can get. One is going to be the blaster box. It's going to have 11 packs per box, seven cards per pack for a total of 77 cards. Cost on that smaller than most blaster box should be around $10. So your cost per card goes down to 13 cents and you are guaranteed to get 11 inserts. You can also get a value pack, which is going to have 24 cards per pack for uh, obviously 24 total cards. Those are going to run you around five bucks cost per card on that 21 cents and you're going to get three inserts. And of course, you can get a gravity pack. You just find it at the target one off pack, seven cards per pack, seven total cards, about a buck 50. So your cost per card on that is about 21 cents and you are guaranteed to get one insert. One thing to note, um, different retail locations are going to have exclusive parallels for their sets and stuff throughout various packs. Uh, really hard to find information on what those parallels actually are going to be, but do expect that you will find some exclusive parallels over at Target, over at Walmart, probably Meyer as well. Um, so now, what are the key cards? Well, there's a lot of rookies in this set. First of all, you got Ryan Mountcastle. You've got Sixto Sanchez. Alec Bohm is in the set. Casey Mize is in the set. Joe Adele. Uh, you also have Dylan Carlson. You've got Nick Madrigal. And you've got Joey Bart and Bobby Dalbeck. For the parallels, autos, inserts, relics, all sorts of different things. Your parallels, you can get a one-of-one one, um, and opening day edition parallels. And you can also get those base image variation in autos. There's also some really nice mascot autos. The mascots hold a little bit of value on the secondary market. Um, so if you can get some of those autos and relics, really nice pull there. And they have the opening day autographs, which has a very nice, a surprisingly very nice checklist, especially for the cost of the cards. And you have a very cool new for this year, the Turf War Dual Diamond Relics. Basically, it has dirt from uh, two different ball fields. On the front side of the card, you've got one player along with their home field dirt. And then you flip the card over and it's got another player with their dirt of their home field. So that's a really cool. Uh, the dual diamond relics are going to be really neat. And then you also got some short print inserts, which are going to be tougher pulls than the other inserts. Those include the dugout peaks, which is not new. They had those last year. The opening day origins, that one is new. And then the walk this way, which celebrates um, home run um, celebrations. So those are some of the uh, cards that you can get and that you're going to be chasing in Topps opening day. For the base parallels, you've got the opening day edition, you've got the opening day one of one. And then I believe what we are going to find is a red foil in the target that is not confirmed. You're going to find a purple foil in the mire and that's not confirmed and then i believe you're also going to find a blue foil which would probably be walmart but that is not confirmed either that is just based on everything that we saw last year so what are the inserts we can pull on this well first of all you've got the dugout peaks that's going to be a 25 card subset 
You've got the Legends of Baseball, which you see over there on the right, which obviously is going to cover off on retired greats that have played in the past. And then you've got the mascot patch cards. Now, that is not a relic. I get that it says patch, but it is not a relic card. That, But it will uh, cover off on some of the mascots around ma Major League Baseball. There's That's a 10-card set. And you have just the regular mascot cards, and there's going to be 24 in that set. Then we have more inserts. We've got the opening day inserts, which actually show the celebrations of opening days that happen at different ballparks across America. 15 cards in that set. You've got the opening day origins, which you see over there on the right, going to cover off on a lot of uh, younger players' opening days. Then you've got outstanding opening days, which covers off on people that have had fantastic opening day performances. 10 cards in that set. The Walk This Way insert, it's going to have 25 cards in that subset. And then we go to the relics. First, we've got the Diamond Relics. That's going to have 26 cards. So that will feature um, different relics from ballparks. So like if it's Boston, you might have a relic of, of the Green Monster or something like that. You have the Major League Mementos. That's a 10-card subset. You've got the Mascot Relics. There's eight cards in that one. And then you've got the Opening Day Relics. There's going to be 55 different cards. That'll probably be the most common one that you find out of Topps Opening Day. And then the Turf War Dual Diamond Relics. Ten cards in that set. You see it over there on the right. That is actually one card. You flip it over. Kind of a really neat, neat uh, insert if you pull one of those. And Topps Opening Day also has autographs. First one is going to be the ballpark profile autographs. That profiles people that are in and around ballparks. So you might have some announcers and stuff on there. Um, there's 10 cards in that set. And you have the image variation autographs. Those are going to be a little bit more valuable out of the autographs, I would assume. Uh, you got 15 cards in that set. You've got the very fun mascot autographs, three cards in that set. The opening day autographs, which will probably be the ones you find most in as you're opening up packs. There's 21 cards in that set. You can see what it looks like over there on the right with Mr. Bryce Harper. And you've got the opening day origins autographs, which will be autographs versions of the insert that we covered off on earlier there are 10 cards in that set and then we have our autograph relics so we've got our diamond relics autographs there's going to be 10 cards in that one the mascot autographed relic only one card and that and i guess that's all of them for some reason i thought there was one more so the question becomes as we're have broke all this down, a lot of fun different inserts, a few autos we can pull out of this, um, some fun relics and stuff. So who do you want to target in a break? Well, if you're getting into breaks, I believe that the best team is actually the Boston Red Sox. It has nine base cards, which is pretty good out of a, uh, out of a 220 card set. Um, they've got two rookies and there are four autos that you can find for the Red Sox, three different relics and nine inserts. But if you're chasing autos, the team you're going to want to get, the Chicago Cubs. They've got 11 base cards. They've got seven different autos. Um, and they've got seven different relics and 11 different inserts. However, there are no rookie cards in there. So think uh, Chris Bryant, think Anthony, think Anthony Rizzo. Those are the people you're going to be chasing for autos. Um, but if you're just looking for a solid choice, I, I don't think you can go wrong with the Atlanta Braves. You've got nine base cards in there. You've got two rookie cards, uh, four, four different autos, three different relics. You can get nine different inserts, a very, very nice uh, team in the Atlanta Braves. But if you're looking for the most value, I believe that the Los Angeles Angels, once again, seem to be a lot of value early in the 2021 season with the Angels um, in a lot of different top sets. Here's what you get with the Angels. You've got seven base cards, only one rookie card, but of course that's going to be Joe Adele. Um, and then you've got three different autos you can pull, two different relics and three inserts. But all of the autos and all of the relics, they're all going to be Joe Adele and Trout. So if you are looking to get that Trout auto, this might be an inexpensive way to get one. Uh, fairly long odds, but if you're buying into breaks, you can't go. I don't think you can go wrong with the Angels. If nothing else, you're going to get some Joe Adele rookie cards. There's going to be value there. So I think the Angels actually have the most value in this set at the moment. But there's also a couple sleepers. One 
is going to be the Miami Marlins. They've got eight different base cards and has, and as has been the case early in 2021, a ton of rookie cards. They've got five different rookie cards in here, just one auto, one relic, and one insert. But if you're chasing rookies, you can't go wrong with the Miami Marlins. And another kind of deep sleeper, but a very nice pull if you can get it, the Minnesota Twins. They've got seven different base cards, two autos, five relics, but 11 inserts. So they've got a ton of cards in the set. Um, so the Minnesota Twins, a very, very nice team that you can also get a little bit of a sleeper team, maybe one you would want to trade for in a random team break. So with all that being said, what are the set positives for Topps opening day? Well, to me, I actually like that it is a rare affordable set in 2021 with the card collecting uh, with the card collecting hobby going berserk in the last 12 months or so. It's rare to find a set that is actually this inexpensive. It's got major league logos on it, um, offers some good rookie cards, offers autos. So it's a very nice set um, for 2021 based upon its price. Um, and it also works as a great intro into card collecting for younger collectors and newer collectors. Yes, this set does have the mascots. Yes, it does have like the walk this way insert, which is very much geared at like celebration stuff that kids like about the game. However, don't sleep on the fact that there are a ton of different rookies in here. And it basically is a cheaper version of the flagship set, which I have always said is one of the best sets that you can collect if you are newer to the hobby. It's a fun set to set build on. Um, and it really, it really kind of is something that if you're just getting back into the hobby, don't have a big budget, this is a very nice set for you to kind of get your feet back wet in the hobby, know what people collect, kind of get your feel for what inserts and parallels and different kind of cards you can pull in 2021 are. The other thing, there are some decent short print inserts to chase. So you've got the dugout peaks, the walk this way, the opening day origins. Um, so those are going to be longer odds, tough to pull, could hold some value on the secondary market. And surprisingly, the auto checklist is actually really good for an inexpensive set like this. You've got autos from uh, Fernando Tatis Jr., Mike Trout, Juan Soto's in there, Aaron Judge. There's a lot of other big names. When you go look at that auto checklist, it's actually, it, 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 it is one of the better auto checklists that has come out in 2021 so far in a set that is really inexpensive. The other thing is I do love the innovative relic design with the two-sided uh, relic and the turf war. Very cool card to get. A card to get. So if you can find one of those, maybe f buy some singles of it on the secondary market. Really, really cool sets. Um, and then it's. F I like that this is a set that investors probably are going to stay away from for the most part. Obviously, investors seem to be buying up everything, and everyone's buying up everything right now. But this really is a true collector set. Um, it's fun. It and that is a missing element in today's hobby and kind of in life in general for the most part. So the fact that we've got mascots, the fact we've got the walk this way, it's the opening day celebrations, um, kind of kind of a quirky set, if you will. It's just a very fun set. And it really is something that collectors and people that have collected for a long time and even newer collectors and younger collectors can really kind of grab a hold of and just have fun with the set a little bit, which is something that, you know, with people worried so much about what cards are worth and where they're going to get their next top loader supply from and all of that, this set kind of takes, it takes itself a little bit lighter. But of course, there are set negatives to every set as well. Um, and for me, I believe that because this is produced um, in retail and in hobby, the, there's long odds for almost all of the big hits. If there is big hits, obviously some of the uh, some of the bigger autos would be considered big hits. Um, but the odds on those going to be pretty long. I mean, if you buy a hobby box or two, maybe drop a hundred dollars. The odds of hitting that probably not great. You could get lucky though. You never know. Um, and then. Could I say it? Is the parallel rainbow too small? It seems like we they actually went back a little bit on the parallel rainbow for 2021. Um, so it'll be interesting to see, uh, is that going to make the pack seem a little bit more boring? Is it going to seem like there's too many inserts and not enough parallels? We'll see, but I don't think that's a positive thing. 
Um, and then obviously the car, these cards do not hold a ton of value on the secondary market. Obviously, some of the rare cards can be value of can be valuable. But if you think you're going to sell that Joe Adele rookie for twenty bucks of that base version of opening day, that's probably not going to happen right off the bat. And then the other thing. Um, even though these boxes are way more affordable than what most boxes are going for in today's market, I actually believe that they are still expensive for what it is. This set also has had cost creep on it. Um, it used to be around 25 bucks. We're getting up to 45, so it is almost doubled in price. So uh, unfortunately, we cut the kids out even a little bit more by these uh, costs going up, and this is a set that is perfect for uh, young collectors. So it's a bummer to see the cost creep on this set as well. And then the other thing that I would have liked to have seen more of, um, typically Topps opening day actually starts previewing some of the cards that are gonna be in Top Series 2. And although we have some examples here in opening day, there are not a ton of them. So it's really kind of just a redo of series one. So I would have liked to have seen maybe a few of the, a few more rookie cards uh, to show up, but unfortunately that is not the case. And then of course the production run is going to be high, although it's not as high as it's going to be on the flagship set. Um, but you've got it all, you've got it in retail, you've got it in, um, uh, hobby and there's a the production run on all sets has been going up so we got to really keep a close eye on that uh because that is we don't want to get back into a junk wax era so um the other last thing we have a bunch of mascots in here and as an angels fan i am offended that the rally monkey didn't make the mascot checklist again this year i think it's been since 2018 Tops, if you are listening, bring back the rally monkey. It's time. All right. So that brings us to our sensational set rating. So how does Tops opening day stack up? Well, let's find out. Like I said, we break it into 10 different categories, and here's what those categories are. And I'll cover off on what I thought about each one of them. First of all, the first category is going to be appeal. I go ahead and give it a five. I do think that this set has uh, appeals to set collectors. I think it appeals to young collectors, and I think it and I think it appeals to longtime collectors and new time collectors. But with so many people in the investment um, side of the world, and so many people that want to do box flipping, and so many people that want to pull huge hits, um, I think there's a lot of those people that are going to stay away. So I'm going to put it right in the middle. I'm going to put it at a five. Uh, the base set checklist, it's not great. It's not terrible. Um, I, I went ahead and gave it a 6.5. I would have liked to have seen more of the Series 2 preview cards come out in there, but unfortunately we're not going to get a ton of those in this set, uh, but it does have some rookies in there. Um, and so overall, not a bad one. I like that they expanded it to 220. So 6.5 for the inserts and for the relics. There's some really fun ones here, guys. Um, I went ahead and gave it a 7.5. You've got some short print inserts. Um, that's really the strength of this set is in those inserts and in those relics. We've got that really neat turf war relic. So I went ahead and gave it a 7.5 for the parallels and variations. I gave it a five and maybe I shouldn't have even gone that high. Um, not a ton of parallels. However, you might be able to find some in the retail. Uh, but with the variations, you do have some image variations that you can find throughout the set. So I was generous and gave it a five, maybe a four there. Uh, for the auto checklist, I, I gave it a 7.5. The auto checklist for this set is surprisingly good this year and much better than it was last year. Check out the auto checklist. I think you'll find some really nice names in there. Obviously, long odds. I'm pulling some of those autos and no autos are guaranteed in any format, which would have been nice. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and give that checklist a 7.5 anyways. For the pack odds and productions, I'm going to give it a 3. There's a lot of cards that are going to be produced here. You're going to find it all over the place. Not a hard set to find. Not a limited production run. I give it a 3. For the card quality, um, this is your standard, standard baseball card. I'm going to go ahead and give that a 3 as well. Maybe on a little bit of a flimsier stock. 
And then historical value, I go ahead and give it a two. Not a ton of value historically here. Some cards here and there. Uh, the latest example would be the Luis Robert card from last year. That was his first Topps rookie. That card holds value on the secondary market. But those are few and far between. I'm going to go ahead and give it a two. If you're searching for value, this is not the set for you. Uh, for artistic value, look, there's not a ton here. Um, it covers off on the it uses the same design as the flagship set but some of the inserts and some of the uh relics do have some artistic value there so i went ahead and gave it a five and then for cost versus value i went ahead and gave it a 3.5 yes it is inexpensive which is great but it doesn't hold a lot of value and because it has actually gotten more expensive um and these cards generally don't hold a ton of value. Cost value, which has been taking a beating on all sets because of how expensive things have become, that's been a category for all sets that they have suffered in. Tops opening day is no different. It gets a 3.5. So as we add up all of those points, where does Tops opening day land on the one cent sensational set ranking? Well, it gets a final score of 48.5. So a middle of the road, all uh, three star set, not a ton here to chase, but if you are a set collector, um, if you are new to the hobby, um, if you are a young collector, I know we have a lot of young collectors in the hobby still, which is great. Um, this, and you don't have a lot of money, um, your monthly budget maybe not gonna go that far. Um, this is definitely a set where you can get some fun stuff. You can get some of the big rookies. Um, there are some chances at some really nice autos that do hold value. There are some chances at some nice short print inserts. So there is some stuff here. Um, even if you're an experienced collector, I think some of these packs will be kind of fun to open um, and a little bit refreshing. The word here is fun. Um, and so that's really how to kind of sum up this set. Not a set for everyone, though. If you are flipping um, cards, if you are uh, if you are if you consider yourself a card investor, this is probably a set that you would want to steer clear of much better sets that you can invest in. But if you're a collector and a hobbyist, there's some fun stuff for you to open. And with it a little bit with it being a little bit more inexpensive, I think you could go ahead and get a hobby box or get a blaster box out in retail, have some fun with it and see where it takes you. Now, where did this land last year though? Last year, the 2020 set score was a 41.5. So this year's set, I think, is actually a lot better. The reason being is that the auto checklist is a lot better. The auto checklist last year did not do very well. Um, and then with some of the inserts and relics that they have revamped for 2021, I feel like the set actually has improved. So we have an improving set, a longstanding set. It, it is, like I said at the beginning of this review, it is like almost a rite of passage onto opening day in its 23rd year of production. So we have come to know and love Topps opening day for what it is. Is. And the last thing we have to do is see where it lands on the 2021 sets to date chart. And here's where Tops Opening Day lands. Well, right now it is at the bottom of the list, but there's only been five sets that have come out. So it does rank 48.5. Um, Don Russ, which came out, you know, a little over a week ago, that's sitting at 58. Our number one set is still going to be Tops Series 1 with a sensational set score of 70.5. So Tops Opening Day, like I said, not for everyone, but you guys, there is some fun stuff here, and I do think that if you get in, it's not a big investment. You might find some cool stuff, and you might grow to love Tops Opening Day like so many other people have over the years. So with that, remember... Roll over to first. Hit that like button for me if you like these reviews. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you can see these reviews as soon as they come out. And until next time, I hope you guys are having fantastic luck if you're opening up uh, Tops opening day and have fantastic luck on your pack pulls. I hope you guys are being good to your family, to your friends, and to your neighbors. And until next time, take care.